Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you guys all the projects that I've been on uh, doing for the last couple of weeks. Uh, the weather has been getting really nice, so a lot of uh, Hoyas are putting out buds and some of them are flowering, so that's exciting. I have some blooms to show you. And then I have some aeroids that Lily, um, a local pr plant friend, she also has a YouTube channel and I'll put her link, the link behind, uh, below so you can see. And, um, and I also have very rare Hoyas to share with you guys. These are things that I haven't even heard of before I got them. And uh, Sarisa sent them uh, with me when I went to Thailand. So I'm going to share those with you guys. But let me start out um, in the projects that I've done. And I'm going to uh, show you some of the Hoyas that I brought out from my greenhouses. And they're hanging out here now. I still haven't brought out all the Hoyas that I want to, but um, it's going to be a work in progress. And then later on, I have an announcement to make, so stick around for that. So let me just start out here. We have uh, this Hoya from Ake uh, is in bud, so that's exciting. Uh, really veiny, pretty leaves that get pretty big. Uh, I have another Hoya from Ake that gets even bigger leaves. Uh, I want to flower them uh, side by side to see if they're very different. But this is the other Hoya from Ake. You can see the leaves are huge. Uh, I haven't bloomed this one uh, yet. And over here I have a Lacanosa Amarillo for those who like uh, this kind of Hoya. So it was in a greenhouse. I just brought it out today. Uh, it's showing out, um, showing a lot of spotchy yellow uh, green leaves like the new growth so that's common um, and that's where the uh, the name amarillo which means yellow in spanish came about i believe so collect, um, correct me if i'm wrong in the comments below and my bromeliad over here is putting on a show it's you know mid-february here in central florida so um this time of year uh, I, I swear like when um, February 15th comes around, a lot of stuff starts happening here in the garden. So that's pretty exciting. And usually like the cold fronts become less and less. So we had, uh, well, I think last night was like six, uh, 59 degrees. And for the foreseeable future, the temperatures are gonna be above, um, above 60 for night lows and up to close to 80 degrees uh, during the day. So this is the Kadada Sumatra I always show. And uh, this guy uh, looks like it's forming peduncles there. and should be booming within a couple, two to three weeks on there. Uh, let's see what else we got here. That's exciting. Um, I brought my Hoya Lithophytica out. It seems to be happy putting out that nice new growth point. I've had uh, little success growing this Hoya. So I decided to put on like a, a really chunky mix on top of Leka and it looks like it uh, likes that. And I also add uh, some eggshells to it and it seems to like that as well. Um, and then over here I have the Hoya Sarisana, which has one of the most incredible flowers um, in the species and that is named after Sarisa uh, in Thailand, a well-known hybridizer. And speaking of that, I'll be seeing her uh, in 10 days or less. I think it's less. Uh, and here is Hoya uh, David Kumingii in bloom. This, uh, this plant has about 10 peduncles, two in full bloom. And some of, our, and, uh, some of the peduncles are in different stages of forming uh, flowers. And my Albo Marginata Pachyquata is uh, looks like it's gonna it's gonna put out some flowers it looks like some of them were drying out and falling but it looks like some of those will make it i love it when it gets that red edge to that um on the white that's really gorgeous and it has two more peduncles down here so i suspect this guy will bloom uh, pretty often this spring and uh, over here I have this Hoya Mirabilis. You can see it's quite gorgeous. 
and it has like these really extra long peduncles so you can see they're at least eight inches and this little plant here it's in a four inch pot and it has uh, five five peduncles so that's it's a pretty uh easy hoya to flower over here on the table i got this really gorgeous i didn't even think it was a copper queen blc copper queen because uh, there's a lot more color on the petals and sepals so i asked michael from artstone and he says this is a really nice form of that um, orchid so it's really gorgeous it reminded me of a francis fox when I first saw it, that lip is, stun is stunning with those like really deep fuchsia dots against that yellow. So I'm really loving that orchid. So I had to buy it. I think I have another one in the garden, uh, but it hasn't bloomed and it's not as pretty looking as that one. This guy, I think he's been in bloom for over a month. If you look at my prior videos, you'll see it's been quite a while. And one of my favorite uh, Hoyas, this is Silver Lady. It gets like um, a very subtle splashing all over the leaf. And you can see the new growth gets a little bit of a red color. Uh, I just love the size of these leaves. Like, like they're small to medium and it's very compact. So I, it's one of my favorite um, Hoyas right now. And over here, this is a Hoya Watt doy and it's a carnosa type and if you look it's a really pretty form of carnosa it has really nice veins it's pretty glabrous on the top of the leaf but the back of the leaf is very fuzzy so that's really nice and these leaves are really really thick there and from the greenhouse uh, i brought out some um, of the hoyas that were in there and getting big so they're instead of getting all entangled with one another i brought them out here and this is Hoya sanguinensis from Borneo. And I also have sanguinensis from Malaysia. And the flowers on these are really quite stunning. I'll see uh, if I can find someone on, on the internet so I can add it to the video. Uh, they're really beautiful. And this is the area. Let me see if I can zoom out so you can see that I've been working on. I think I started it back in August um, last year. and all these setbacks between the hurricanes and the really cold weather um, i have been putting it off but uh, i think this weekend i did a lot of this uh, adding plants to it so basically i took a, a neighbor cut down a tree and i have a tree trunk across between the uh, these um, these trunks on this live oak and um, and over there i the first thing I did was I put this really big uh, Jose Bueno philodendron. Um, that stayed like that for months. And then uh, just recently I started adding a lot of plants to it. And I'm going to go over some of them. Yeah, this is a Michelle I put over here. This is EBC 145, the spoon leaf one. Uh, over here is a Bilobata. It used to be go around as Ponchoy, but I think the, the latest is that Ponchoy is really a, uh, one of the types of Bilobata Hoyas. So she's pretty happy there. And I put my big um, fungi over there. She's going to take off climbing up all over the place in here. So when the weather heats up and it's really humid, this is really going to be um, really dense. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on it and take cuttings. Uh, let's see over here we have a Dyskidia one stripe that I put over there. This poor Cathlea is on its way out but I checked last night and she was still fragrant and uh, I think was in bloom for at least three weeks. Then I put some Phalaenopsis on the trunk as well and I mounted some bromeliads over here and I have the uh, Hoya Rotunda Flora. There I have a Decii Chicken Farm Cross and this is a uh, Dendrobium. If you look in one or two videos ago, I went to, to the West Coast Orchid Society show and I bought this guy and he seems pretty happy. 
And I think he's getting ready to bloom. I just spotted some buds on there. So that's pretty exciting. And over here is Hoya Emerita. She's getting ready to bloom. She's quite long. I don't know if it's advisable to cut these into nodes and to root because it's like over a yard long. So um, I might do that after it blooms when the weather gets hot and humid and I'll try to propagate her. She's getting way too long. But I did notice that at the base of the plant, she's putting out two new growths from right at the base, which is unusual for a Hoya. And what else I have over here is the Standrobium. Um, that's quite stunning. And today you're going to be seeing some really nice large size uh, philodendrons. And they're from Lily. Like I mentioned before, she lives in an apartment here in St. Pete. Uh, she also has her own YouTube channel. Like I said, I'm going to put the link below. But they're really nicely uh, mounted on these um, moss poles that she made. And they're really healthy. And she brought them over here because... Like I said, she was in an apartment and it's, uh, the space is limited and I think she wants more room for Hoyas. So that's the secret. Uh, over here, this is a variegated fig and uh, another one of Lily's philodendrons. This one is quite tall. It's about six feet. Um, she has a tag on it. Let me see what it is. I think I know, but I'm not sure. It's a philodendron mayo. From watching Blanca on her YouTube channel, she's down in South Florida. I think uh, her channel is the Orchid Diva. She makes candles and she has a really beautiful backyard full of orchids. I'm sure most of you already follow her, but if you don't, I'll put the link below as well to her channel. Uh, she does most of it. Let me move this couch here. She mounts most of her orchids on palm trees. So uh, I got inspired. Uh, she uses like pantyhose, but I had all these. Um, these are uh, organza bags, pretty good size. They're probably uh, eight by six organza bags. So I put the orchid in there. I, I removed the pot, put the orchid in there with the roots, and I add some more sphagnum. Um, and I wanted to leave them exposed like this uh, so you guys could see. And then I tie uh, a zip tie around it so it's pretty firm there. And by the time the roots get attached to the, um, to the trunk of the palm tree, the bag will disintegrate within a year or two. And then I'll get some uh, Spanish moss and I'm going to cover all this so you don't see the bag. All you'll just see all the Spanish moss hanging uh, from the orchid. Um, I just wanted to leave them exposed so you guys uh, could see what I'm going to be doing. So I put that Phalaenopsis there. I put one here. So yeah, I attached a lot of these Phalaenopsis. Uh, some of these are from uh, the trees that I had on the other side of the garden. Uh, it was really cold. Some of them lost a lot of their buds um, because uh, the temperatures dropped down into like the mid, it stayed out in the mid 30s most of the night and I think it dropped down to 33. Um, I didn't get any ice back here, but it did get really cold. So these really beautiful uh, Phalaenopsis. You can actually pick some of these up here in uh, the area for like $10 each uh, this time of year. There's lots of uh, Phalaenopsis around. So, uh, and I think they add quite a bit of color to like this pretty green background here and Swiffer over there she's hanging out in front of her altar we have a little altar that we cleaned up a little bit as well let me show you guys what we have on there we got our Buddha and we have a Swiffer's Buddha there oh that was a gift from Jordan she was very kind I think it was a couple years ago she sent me that Buddha and I love it so much And I'll start out with these two. Um, I think, uh, uh, I know they're both the Cipule. Uh, this one, when it, it flowered for me, and I think if you go back a few videos, you'll see this guy. Uh, the flowers look like egg beaters. 
uh, or a little crown. They're quite interesting. And uh, this guy starts out uh, with the little egg beaters, but then it opens up into like the starfish form, which I find quite beautiful. Look at that. It looks like it's coming out for you. It's really beautiful. I really, really like this uh, form. And if I recall um, correctly, when I was visiting Sarisa back in November, I think she told me that there was two um, discipulae that, uh, th uh, that were different. And here we are. We have this one. And then I just wish this one was uh, opened so you guys can see. But you can see that they both have similar leaves. They're really thin leaved. And I have it uh, in uh, like a coca husk. And in the bottom of it, I have some weka. And sometimes I sit them in like a little dish with a little bit of water. So they stay constantly moist. Uh, especially here in Florida when it gets really hot. Uh, starting in April and May. They will need to be in a state where they are constantly getting um, moisture. So that's what I'm going to be doing with these. So yeah, Hoya discipule. Behind it is a Hoya Erythrina. Over here is a Hoya Ricardo from it's one of Cerise's crosses. And this beautiful Oxinium is still in bloom. I think it's been in bloom for about four weeks already. So you guys, you always make a lot of comments about my metal racks that I had over here. Um, they were not doing so well. So I had them for over just a little bit over two years um, and they started to rot like at the base and I'll show you guys what happened to them. So I went on Amazon. I couldn't find those and I don't even know if I wanted to buy them again because they they were about ninety nine dollars and if they're only going to last two years. It was a little bit pricey for that, I thought. Um, inside the house, um, they probably could last a lot longer, but I don't grow any plants in the house. So, so I got these uh, pressure-treated wood um, racks on Amazon, and I'll add these to my Amazon store. So if you go into um, the description of the video and you hit on my links, there's, uh, you'll find my Amazon store, my Instagram, and my Facebook group and uh, what else is on there? Just a bunch of stuff so you can check it out. Um, when I find a product that I like and I use, I put it on that Amazon store. So this rack only cost, I think it was on sale and this rack is 62 inches high, about four feet wide and it was about $40 so I got it. Uh, even if it lasts me a couple years, it'll be a lot cheaper than those metal racks. So I got two. I'm still not convinced that is where I want to keep them in front of the gazebo. I might move them over to this side. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, I removed all the Hoyas that were on this side of uh, this gazebo. So, And over here I have Hoya uh, insularis. Uh, it's doing pretty good. It stayed out here all winter long, I'm surprised. Even when temperatures drop down into 33 degrees one night, uh, it still um, did pretty well. It did get a couple of spots, maybe from the cold and like a damaged leaf. But other than that, it looks pretty healthy still. And then over here, I have my Hoya Thailandica. I picked up in Thailand in uh, November. And down here, I have a Hoya. Um, M7, I believe. Let me check the tag on here. MA07. And she's doing pretty well. I love the dark, the dark edges to it. It's a Verticillata type Hoya that gets really dark edges to it. Really like the size and shape of the leaves as well. And on the rack here, I also purchased this really gorgeous, uh, Dolosa Varialba Gorgeous. It's a cross, um, I think it's a natural cross between Wakariana and a Cattleya. And the thing about it, it is incredibly 
uh, fragrant and it's a really nice fragrance. So loving that uh, orchid. And over here I have another uh, potted Phalaenopsis in one of my McCoy pots. And um, just let me go back there and just show you a few things. Like this whole area is, go is gonna be a project. Um, so I've started on that side behind me and I brought out um, those metal racks. I have one over here and I have a better one that's falling apart. I'll show you that. But I brought out some of the philodendrons from the greenhouse. That is a torsion. And there's the, um, the Florida. Uh, it's not a Florida beauty. It's a philodendron pedatum variegated. And this is a friend of mine hybridized uh, this uh, anthurium and it's really quite beautiful. I think it has crystallinum on it and something else I can't remember, but it's a really large, uh, very large uh, anthurium type. Again, this is Lily's moss poles. She brought quite a few. There's a, at least 10 plants that I, um, they have to be zip tied to something or else when it gets windy back here they uh, w they were tipping over so I zip tied them to the to the racks there and over here I'm sorry it's kind of a mess still but it's a work in progress um, I took a lot of uh, the lily uh, philodendrons and I put it underneath this mango tree and we have all these really nice moss poles let me just step back a little bit you can see they're all potted and they should be climbing up into the tree. So it should be exciting to see them grow up there. And I think, uh, let me just show you one more thing on the side. There's this orchid that's really cute. She's really beautiful. Um, don't think I have the tag for it anymore, but she all of a sudden started blooming and over here there's not much going on i haven't reached this side uh, to work and what i really wanted to show you was the Rotusa because i think she's been blooming for over gosh for over eight months i've had it i've shown her in my videos she's not covered in blooms but there's quite a few buds forming all the time and the flowers so you can see she's pretty happy pretty happy here I don't know what I'm doing to it it's in this uh, this pot it's really a not it's probably like the size of a four inch pot in there so I don't think this Hoya likes a lot of substrate to be planted in um, She's really quite happy putting out all these buds and flowering nonstop. So I'm really happy with her on that pot. And uh, I'm sure you guys are dying to see the rare Hoyas. So let me just go over there, set up my table, and start bringing them uh, out one by one. So this is Mr. Nips over here enjoying the lounge. I think he enjoys this lounge chair more than I do. So let me show you the Hoyas. Well, this Hoya is really not very rare. Uh, it's been around for quite a while. It's named after, after Ted Green. It's Hoya Greenii. Uh, I've had the hardest time keeping this alive. Uh, and uh, Sarisa instructed me how to keep it happy. And it's, so far, it seems that it's doing pretty well. As you can see, it's putting out a lot of new growth. It looks really happy. And it's because I have uh, this pot has a little reservoir of about half inch of water at the bottom so it constantly I think it likes uh, to have that little moisture down there and it seems to be pretty happy and putting out all this new growth which is pretty exciting since I have never in 20 odd years I've never been able to keep one of these guys alive and uh, the next Hoya I had never even heard of it until I got it from Cerisa, these leaves are quite beautiful. And it's Hoya Kipendiensis. 
and I think I got a flower picture. I'll add it to the screen. It's pretty thin leaf. So again, I have it in a mix of cocoa and perlite and it sits on a uh, tray with a little bit of water and it seems to be pretty happy. Uh, hopefully this guy won't give, it, give me any problem. The blooms are quite interesting. I can't wait uh, to see it bloom. So this is an, one of the Hoyas I had never even heard of, but I'm really excited to have it. And this one I've showed before, uh, but it's so stunning. The flowers are so exciting that I wanted to show you guys again. I don't know how many people have this Hoya, but this is IM4, uh, and it's been published as Hoya Paradisiae. Uh, the flowers are really a nice size. They have the edges of the uh, corollas are really, really hairy. It's pure white for the most, some of them are pure white, and I think I've seen like a pink variety of this species, but it's really, really beautiful. And when I got this Hoya, it had a peduncle, but it looks like if you look close enough, it looks like it's trying to put out some flowers. So I've, I've, seen, I've seen one in person in Boom, and it was stunned by it. And I am so glad um, to have this one. So uh, hopefully I'll get it to Boom pretty soon. So this is Hoya Paradisiae. Uh, this is a Hoya for a new species from Sulawesi and as you can see it's a thin leaf. Uh, it's quite beautiful. The leaves have a lot of uh, texture to them but it's a rather thin leaf um, and it's a newer species that was just recently uh, found in the jungle. Um, it looks like this, it's there's the word green there, so I might the flowers be a little green. I have never seen the flowers, and I don't think uh, I have a picture to share with you guys. So I hope to bloom uh, this Hoya soon, uh, just out of curiosity to see what it looks like. It's always exciting to not know what a Hoya is going to bloom like, and when it blooms, the anticipation is just incredible, and you're checking it like every other hour almost. And the next Hoya is a Hoya from AH Hoya Nursery in Thailand. Uh, if you watch one of my videos, I did a whole um, like 40 minute video on this nursery and it's exquisite. Check it out um, below. There's quite a few videos I did in Thailand. Uh, so this guy is AH779. Let's show you the tag. And just look how splashy and textured the sleeve is it reminds me like a, a hoya bahoy species bahoy but it, it is quite beautiful and i hopefully uh, they'll continue to get uh, this this splash and it's a good size leaf so i don't even know if these leaves will get any bigger than that so and this hoya is another one that i don't uh, think i ever heard of it before it's hoya ende serie and look at the leaves, they're really nicely textured as well. They're very glabrous. It seems to be pretty easy to grow. It's putting out a really nice growth point here. New leaves, the new leaves are quite beautiful. And I've seen the flowers online and they are, they, they're a really beautiful uh, shade of pink and white. Uh, quite, quite a beautiful flower as well. So if you don't have this Hoya and you like thin leaf Hoyas uh, with pretty flowers, uh, I would suggest you look into it. Hoya in the Serie. Uh, this Hoya is another one from AH Nurseries. And I had the pleasure of meeting Nata when I was doing, when I went to visit their nursery, AH in uh, Ratchaburi, um, in Thailand uh, in November. So look at this Hoya. That is one of the weaves. Look how splashy that is. And that one, this is a newer weave. 
and so hopefully I will get splash here as it goes along but I really like the form uh, and everything about this Hoya and Nata is a special incredible friendly generous woman so check out their offerings uh, ahhoyas.com uh, and uh, you can order from them in Thailand and you can get your own Hoya Nata So the announcement, um, and a lot of you already know, is that uh, I'm going to Thailand in about 10, 11 days. I'm going to the uh, Bangkok International Plant um, Sale and Show um, in Bangkok. And then I'm going to go up to Chiang Mai as well. Um, so I'm going to be ha doing videos at this incredible uh, plant sale uh in bangkok and then i'll probably do some videos up in chiang mai uh with jack so uh, and i'll probably go out into the wild and film some hoyas out there so that will be a very exciting i always get super excited when i go over to thailand i love the people the food the culture and of course the hoyas so and i'll get to meet uh, my favorite hoya people over there as well so this one here is, uh, I fell in love with it when I saw it in Boom. Last time I was in Thailand, it's Hoya Kapua Census. And it's just, the leaves are very fuzzy on top and bottom. And look at the new, the new leaves there. See if you can see it, they're really fuzzy. Really stunning. And the flowers are just incredible. Um, and I have footage from when I was there, so I'm going to add it when I um, when I edit the video. I'll add that uh, flower video that I, I shot when I was in Thailand. So, but I'm so uh, lucky to have one of these, and I cannot wait for it to boom here in Florida. This is Hoya Kapua Census. and this guy here is a Hoya Obscura variegated. It's it's pretty rare. I haven't seen a lot of it here in the United States, but it's quite a beautiful plant. I love the new leaves coming in. You can really tell the variegation. I had a little bit of a slow start. I've had this plant for over, I would say about four months, and uh, it didn't really take off as I wanted it to, uh, uh, but it's really, really doing well as soon as I moved it up to these four inch pots. So this is Hoya Obscura variegated. It's really quite beautiful. So yeah, guys, if you want to uh, follow my trip to, follow me on my trip to uh, Thailand, I'm gonna be doing um, the whole trip. I'm gonna be doing getting in the plane, getting into the hotel. You'll see my whole journey and then getting into that incredible uh, Bangkok International Plant Festival. So yeah, if you want to follow my journey and my blog of my trip, please do so. I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe and hit that uh, notification bell. And that uh, will tell you when I post. I usually post on Sundays, but when I travel, I usually try uh, to do it on Sundays, but it usually falls um, that I end up uploading it on Wednesdays or Thursdays or whenever I get to um, a place where I can get reliable internet uh, where I can uh, download a video so and here is Hoya Peltata this little guy uh, when I saw um, flower pictures of this recently I was mesmerized um, it's a little tricky er to grow um, I have it in the greenhouse high humidity these leaves are like smaller than a pencil eraser um, I think like I can get it and focus with my finger behind it you can see there Nope. There you go. They're really tiny. Um, I have it uh, down here. There's a bunch of cocoa ch uh, chunks. And this is some uh, sphagnum moss, as you can see. And it's in this reservoir. And I have some water down there. So it gets uh, a lot of moisture so it doesn't dry out. And it seems to be pretty happy. It's put out. Uh, two nodes and three leaves and it looks like it's continuing uh, to grow with that little growth tip. So that's a cute little Hoya. It's a little trickier to grow. 
um, but um, rewarding nonetheless. So that's going to be it for today. Again, I really appreciate everyone that watches my videos and follows me on uh, YouTube um, and uh, my Hoya groups on Facebook and my Amazon store. So yeah, there's links below to all that. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, and that's going to be it for today. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. And I also hope to see you in Thailand. So take care and bye-bye.